Welcome to the Photo Flunky Show, episode 103. Today, we're going to try and teach you how to create a photography portfolio. Hi, my name is William Beam. Hi, my name is Lee Beam. And of course, we want to let you know that show notes for this episode are going to be available at williambeam.com slash episode 103. And you'll find links to subscribe to the show there and also at our player, photoflunky.com. Before we get started, I also want to let you know that we've got a coupon code for MacFun. And this is actually a good time to use it because Aurora HDR 2018 was recently named Mac's, or excuse me, Apple's Mac App of the Year. Man, that's a mouthful to say, isn't it? It's just too many words. It's too many words. It's a Mac app. But anyways, that's actually a pretty high honor. If all the apps that are in the App Store for the Mac computers, this was named the very best of the year 2017. And there's a special going on from MacFun. If you want to buy Aurora, whether you're upgrading or whether you're buying it brand new, they've kind of dropped uh, some money off the price, but you can save even more. So if you use my coupon code, which is BEAM, B-E-E-M, same as my last name, that will save you an additional $10 off the already discounted price. Plus, they've got some bundles going on there. There's a couple of videos and presets and things like that. So it's a really good time to go buy Aurora HDR 2018. And also that coupon code will work on other products in the, the Mac Fun. Soon to be Skylum, that they've changed their name to Skylum. Also, it's available for Windows now. So uh, even though it's the Mac app of the year, if you're a Windows user, it works for you as well now too. Just go to williambeam.com slash macfun. And when you check out, use the coupon code BEAM. Now we get to talk all about portfolios. Yes. Well, let's start off with a basic question. For a lot of photographers who are just getting started or doing this, maybe as an enthusiast, why build a portfolio? You want to promote your work for something. It's not necessarily for business for, or to sell it. It might be for interaction, popularity. It might be to gain access to a group or community of photographers where there's a requirement. But basically, to me, it's, it's, it's your resume of your photography. I think that's a good way to put it. I mean, when you're building a portfolio, you're putting in your best photos. And the idea is to say, this is who I am, what I do, and this is how good I am at this time. And this is the kind of work that I want to do. So it's not just a matter of every random photo that you've ever taken. You're looking for your best. And you're also kind of looking for your best within kind of a format. Yes. Why don't we get into what is a photography portfolio? Obviously, it's going to be a collection of photos. But those photos are saying something about you. And it's also giving people a chance to discover you. And this is going to depend upon whether you're sending this out as a book or whether you're showing it online. I've had some good luck because... I've actually had some offers just because I put my photos out there online. I put them in the portfolio and people see some of these photos and, and in some cases they want me to work for them, which rarely do I ever do. But in other cases, they want to buy the photos and that's actually nice. It's just something I've already done. I'm proud of the photos. I put them out there and someone comes along and says, I'd like to use this for art in my office. I'd like to use this on my ceiling, whatever the case may be. I'm doing much better than if I just put this on some kind of a photo sharing site and said, if you'd like to buy this, click here. That that never seems to work. Well, when you put it up on a photo sharing site, I think it's harder to search. And if you go out and you're looking for something specific, first of all, it helps to have it in a category because when you're searching things, it's easier to find something that's labeled for what it is. It's also easier to sift through things when they belong together. So having a portfolio on your own website, I think is much better because you can make it more easily searchable for what it is. And if you're going to put a portfolio together, not only is it saying who you are and what you do, but you want to understand your audience. In other words, who's going to want to see your work? And in some cases, this may be, all right, let's go with food photography. This may be restaurants. This may be food stylists. It may be someone who's got... Somebody into travel, somebody into nutrition... See, I, I blanked out there. I'm, I'm glad you jumped in. Uh, I'm there to fill the gaps. <laughs> You're here to help. Really, you have a theme. Your audience is going to be looking for something that they can use or something that they like as a work of art. And again, photographer genres will help you fill that in, whether it's portraits, travel, with food, weddings, whatever the case may be. Wedding photographers always have portraits up because they have potential you know, brides and grooms that are looking for a wedding photographer. And they want to see samples of their work and say, does this person's style fit 
the kind of photos that I want to have as a result of my wedding. Yes. And the style is not just taking the photo. The style is how it's processed because we had the hardest time finding somebody for our wedding photos. And that's very true. It's, it's not just someone who's taking photos with good light and good exposure. You're looking at the composition. You're looking, oh, did they think of something that maybe other photographers didn't do? Yeah. And do they know places to go do engagement photos that other photographers may not know about? It's you're hiring them not just for the photograph that you see, but all of their knowledge and skill before the photo, during the photo shoot, and afterwards when they're post-processing and, and putting in a presentation. That's really what wedding photographers are selling with their portfolio. Yes, absolutely. So they, and there's no reason that other photographers can't do this. I mean, I'm looking at some of the photographers who are doing automotive photography. And if you want to go work for large brands or if you want to even work for your local car dealer, you need to show that you can demonstrate this product in its best light. Yes. And I think products, I don't want to say products in general because that leaves things too broad, but you get a certain category or type of products that would be photographed in a similar way. So even if you're photographing jewelry and somebody else wants you to photograph shoes or something, you might find that they're close enough that the person looking for somebody finds what they like in, in your style. So it, it gives you a little bit more versatility, but um, yeah, still stay within what, what you're doing. And we don't mean to say that portfolios are only for people who are trying to earn money or do business. Sometimes if you're a photographer, you might be willing to do things in trade just for the opportunity to shoot something for someone. There are plenty of models who will work with photographers on a trade basis because they like the quality of their work. If you can take an image of somebody that makes them happy and looks good and feel good, then that way you don't have to go off and pay models. I mean, it depends upon your skill level and where you are. And if you can offer them something that they're willing to say, okay, I'm willing to offer my time. Yes. So you need to have a portfolio to show them this is what I can do. And if they're willing, based upon your skill level, they'll trade with you. And there are some models out there who say, I never shoot for free. And I thought, that's great. You know not to bother with them. Yeah. Unless, of course, you're earning money from your photography. I think that's the other thing. If you're earning money, then you're going to, you're, you're better situated to spend money. Or if you're planning to earn money, you, there's probably going to be some kind of financial investment in, in getting your, your photos together. Absolutely. But, if, you've, if you're earning money, you've got a budget to go out there, then yes, absolutely. You're going to hire the model and you're going to pay for other people, makeup and artists and, and things that go along with it. But your portfolio, whether you're in business or not, helps you get access to the things that you want to photograph. It shows that you're at a certain level and some people are happy just with a photograph. Some people are in this for the business. Whatever your skill level, there's probably somebody who's, who's interested in what you have to do, but you still have to put the portfolio together to show them what you can do. And some people want the experience and the exposure. Absolutely. Now, if you're going to have a portfolio, you need to have a theme that kind of runs along with it. In other words, when someone looks at this, they want to know more about your style. And that's where we say that not only is it a matter of choosing the same genre, but you need to really develop a style of photography. Yes. That's going to be your use of light, your use of color, lines, composition, any number of really design and art elements that kind of can go into this. What is your style? I think when you're developing a style, you there are certain things that you start to do naturally. I don't know that you really think about them when you're trying to put something together. It's like telling a 10-year-old that one day they're going to sign their name on stuff and then they try and make a signature and that never lasts. No. Your, your style is going to emerge. If you do something over and over, you will start doing it a certain way and presenting it in a certain way. You'll have your own um, finishing touch methods and that together is going to give your photos something that's unique about them that gets tied back to you once you've been doing it for a long time or as you start putting them out people who are paying attention to your work will start to see something and associate it with you because it's almost got your little trademark in it just by the way that you do things and present them it really does because if i look at some of the photographers that i i like their work and i admire I think of Joel Grimes and he has a very signature look. I mean, he does his HDR backgrounds. He shoots his models or subjects on, you know, a, basically a gray or a white sweep and then composites them in there. He kind of desaturates his photos a bit and just his composition and his post-processing style. I look at his photos and said, Joel Grimes did that. I can say the same thing with Tim Wallace. He's an automotive photographer in the UK and he has lovely high-end work, but it's not just his post-processing style. It's also his composition, his use of motion in some of the images, and his lighting on some of the detail shots. 
it is remarkable to me that you know someone can be that good as a automotive photographer his but he stuff is. is really good i'm not a car person but he's you know and that's the th- that's the beauty i think of his photography you don't have to be a car person to appreciate the art of what he does but it makes you stop it, it makes you stop and look yeah even if you're never going to buy a ferrari in your life you know he's he's been recently posting some things on facebook of basically trucks you know like cargo trucks transportation things and he makes those look good and sexy <laughs> I know. How do you do that? <laughs> I've seen a lot of, you know, tractor trailers driving down the road. None of them ever looked as good as in his photos. They, they really do. <laughs> yeah, he's, he loves what he does. And I think if you find something where you've got a passion for what you do, it's a lot more natural for that style to start emerging. And let's say for portraits, you may want to do a theme on headshots. I've come to the realization that I need to update my own portfolio. And if you want to take a look at that, just go to williambeam.com and you'll see in the menu at the top, it'll say portfolio. And I've got both portraits and travel. So if you go scroll to left and right, it'll show you the portraits. If you scroll down and then left to right, it'll show you my travel photos. I have an idea for portrait photography that I really want to do with people in the fitness industry to kind of show things that they love. And so them doing the things that they love. I hope that it comes off as a good idea, but it also means that I have to raise myself up to the level of the photos that I want to show. And that's another reason for creating a portfolio. Sometimes it spurs you to improve your work so that you can show that, yeah, I really can do this. I mean, you don't just sit there and just take snapshots and put them up there. You want to raise the bar on what you can do in your portfolio. And you, you get to learn something new because portraits are, are not a strange thing for you at all. If you were looking at some of the photos that you'd spoken about, your lighting's going to be different. Your studio setting or how, wherever you're going to be, your setup is going to be different. Your lens might be different. So oh. there, there are a whole string of things that, that you need to start thinking about instead of just flowing through and doing it because you know your way around. Well, what's driving me for this is the fact that I don't want to use the same lens, the same lighting on, on every shot. I want to think less about my gear and more about the subject that I'm trying to tell their story. And then what gear I use will depend upon the, the story that I tell. And that's really what's driving me to want to do these shots is that I think I can do better than what I've shown before. So now I have to go out and prove it. And if I do a good job with that, then I can update my portfolio. We've talked about choosing a theme for your portfolio and kind of give you some ideas. It might be a genre, it might be a style or a combination thereof. Now, when it's time to select photos for your theme, there are a few things that we wanted to go over. The first one ought to be obvious based on what we've been talking so far, but you want to use related images. If you're creating a portfolio, you don't want to have a shot of food here, a portrait there, a landscape next. They need to be related in style and in genre, I guess. I think if you think about it as an album, you know, you might have a lot of collections of photos, but you put the stuff that goes together in an album. It's it's got to be under one category or one volume and, and just keep things that they work together because when as somebody's scrolling you want it to flow absolutely now the next item we want to talk about was to show some personal style you don't want this to look like just anybody could have taken it because then there's really no reason to come to you for a portrait if anybody else could have done the same thing well this is where your personal presentation and and your little um i think i think this is where the art shines through yeah i mean if you're going to put yourself out there as an artist whether it's for a commercial gain or as recognition of what you can do, your personal style is really what declares that you're an artist and you want recognition for it, but also you want opportunity for that style of art. Yes. Do something that you love and have your own style for it. we got a couple of things that we're recommending that you don't do. You can go on workshops and you can take some absolutely stunning photos because they're almost laid out there for you. Those don't really go in your portfolio because you're not the creative genius behind them. That's true. Yeah. I mean, you can go into a workshop and maybe there's an opportunity there that's not part of the workshop and take a photo that is your idea and your construct and I'll kind of give you half and half and grant you that. But for the most part, if you're going to a workshop, the idea there is to learn and it's nice to come home with some pretty photos from a workshop, but the real idea for your portfolio is to take the things that you learned at the workshop and go put them into practice completely on your own. With your own style. That's the other thing. If you're doing workshop photos, it's going to be a lot harder to put your own little slant on it, depending on what that is. Well, because here, you're basically using somebody else's setup and somebody else's creative style, whether it's the lighting or the background or the choice of subjects, to put the composition, the whole thing together, set the mood and anything else that goes with it. That's not really yours. So 
I would actually say, aside from what you've mentioned, a workshop photo doesn't really showcase what you can do. No, it doesn't. Unless you can, unless you know that you can replicate that. And I'll, I'll be honest and admit here, I've got one portrait in my portrait portfolio right now that was taken at a workshop. And so I've, I've kind of violated my own rule. But at the same time, I put it there because it wasn't a, a workshop set up. I was in the location, but I set the thing up. I worked with the model and, and got the lighting the way I wanted to. So I said, mm, okay, I can take this one. You took this while you were away at a workshop, but I it was did. your photo. But, and that, yeah, that, that kind of and, doesn't really fall into what you were describing. Well, it's, it's to me, it's on the line. I say, don't use workshop photos. Then I go back and said, well, I've got one in mind. So it's, it's a, bit, a little bit of cheating, but that's also one of the reasons why I want to go off and redo my portfolio now with some fresh images that are all mine and I'm not, you know, attending any workshops these days. It's one that I've, I look in there and I think, you know, I had to pull that out simply because it's kind of on the fine line of what I'm talking about. Okay. See, to me, there's no line based on my past mm. comments, but uh, yep, I, I hear what you're saying though. Another one we want to say is don't use similar photos. It doesn't mean that you can't show more than one photo of the same subject, but if you're, if you've got a setup and then you're rotating models in and out, or maybe you've at a place and you've shot a lot of photos of the same model, and I, I keep going back to portraits because that's you know what interests me the most. You don't really want to show a lot of things from one shoot. You want to take the best that you have of your different shoots. And, and hopefully you've got more shoots than you have slots to make in your portfolio. But you want to show variety of what you're capable of doing. I remember us looking through somebody's portfolio once and the photos were really good. But there were two problems. Um, one was that they just went on forever. And the other one was that we kept seeing things that we'd scroll back and think we'd seen it before. And it was actually different. But it was maybe, like you say, the same model in the same clothing, just the same model and and kind of shot in a similar way in the same environment. And it, it kind of makes you feel like, OK, I've recycled through them. And that, that's another risk people can end up stopping their search because they think that they've gone through it and they're back to the beginning again when they're not. Well, let's turn this around. Models also need portfolios and they want to show their work. But if you're a model and you're putting out a portfolio, you don't want to show the same clothing, the same scene, basically by this, everything shot by the same photographer. You want to show that you can work with different people and have different looks. And you want to show a variety of your styles and, and your ability to work as a model. So it's the same thing. You don't want everything to look alike because the impression that a potential buyer or someone who wants to work with you will get was like, well, you can only do one thing. Or you've only done this once. Yeah. On the flip side of don't use similar photos, and this is just a personal preference thing. I don't even know if you've got a view on this, but I am not a fan of people mixing black and white and color photos. To me, it's two completely different types of photography. And if you're going to do black and white, have a black and white portfolio. And if you're going to do color, do a color portfolio. But I, I just, as soon as I'm, I'm looking through color and then it goes to black and white, it almost interrupts the flow of it and feels like it doesn't belong or vice versa. Are you doing, you know, you're going through some monochrome photos and all of a sudden you, you get something in color. It's, it sort of disturbs things. This is not the time to disturb the pattern in that way. I think you're right. And I'm, I don't have a hard and fast rule against it. I hadn't given it that kind of thought, but I, I know what you're talking about. It really does change the way you view something. And if I look at uh, landscapes, I kind of want to see them in color. I mean, you know, all credit due to people before color was made, but I don't want to see black and white landscapes. Yeah. I, but if I see some color landscapes and I see some black and white landscapes, I'm thinking that, all right, is this person have a variety of skills or does this person not have a definable style? That's true. So I get what you're saying there as, as far as, and that kind of goes back to what we said, show your personal style. And Look, I like black and white photos. I've got on my uh, computer, I've got like three little desktops and each one has a different black and white photo. But that's kind of my theme for this. Each one is, you know, I've got a model, I've got my dog and one of my old Harley Davidsons. Yes. <laughs> but, all, but the theme is the tonal contrast and, and black and white style for each one of them. One of the things we want to talk about is how many photos go into your portfolio. And I'm just going to put this out there. At least 10, no more than 20. Because... You need to have enough to show your variety, but you don't want to have a portfolio that just goes on and on and doesn't end. Well, people never get to the end of them. No, there's, there's got to be a beginning and there's got to be a middle and there's got to be an end. And 20, I, to me, I know some people have got maybe 24, but I'm going to say 20. That's enough. That showcases what you're capable of doing and it gives you room to kind of build a sequence 
of your photographs, which shows maybe a mood of maybe your maybe your sequence is about motion, maybe it's about color, maybe it's about your composition. But a sequence really is the flow that you're helping someone feel as they go from your very first photo to your very last one. The last little thing that we want to say about choosing your photos is you want to start strong, you want to finish strong, and you don't want to bore them in the middle. If you've got a portfolio, these are your best photos. This is your best work. And somehow or another, you need to rank them from what is number one to what is number 20. And none of them, you're in good shape if any one of them could be your first photo. Yeah. But you need to make an impact. And you don't want to start off strong and then kind of go down to your worst photos. And then at the end of the book or the end of the portfolio, somebody's saying, oh, well, okay, that's all right. Well, it kind of communicates that people will remember what they ended with and people will be drawn in by what you start with. And people do remember what they start with and what they end with. And this is a silly thing. It's not related to the photographic portfolio at all, but that's the way I eat my food. <laughs> I, you know, I sit there and I, I pick what is the favorite thing that I want to take my first bite and then I save my favorite thing for my last bite. And it may not be the same thing, you know, from beginning to end, but I don't want to end the meal with the stuff that I really didn't want to eat in the beginning. Yeah, you see, I, I tend to do it the other way around. Um, I'll, I'll start with the favorite thing, but also like to make sure that I can finish it before I'm full. Let's take that and put it into building your portfolio. You want to have your strongest image, I believe, right up front. Yes. I'd say whatever you were going to, the one that you were arguing with yourself, should it be this one or that one? Well, the other one goes at the end. Yep, I agree. I think you want to you want to have that final thought. And also, if you don't start strong, people are not likely to go beyond the first photo. So you want a really strong one to to begin it. But like I say, your last impression that hangs around. And you should not have mediocrity in the middle. Some photos are clearly going to be stronger than others. Let's go back to the sequence also. You need to kind of build someone's emotion. And emotion doesn't have to just build up or build down. I mean, you can have peaks and valleys with the emotion of the photos that you're showing, whether this is where your strength is, or maybe it's a development of something that your subject is. You want to show a development of your lighting, a development of your subject, a development of your skill or technique as a photographer, whatever that is, you want to have that sequence go with you from beginning to end, but you've got to have a very powerful beginning and a very powerful ending. And maybe then you can go through your peaks and valleys in between. Yeah, and honestly, the peaks and valleys should not be, unless you have an exceptional photo, which will be at the beginning and at the end, yeah, at, that's what we're saying, you know, where, where we suggest to put them. You should not have an extreme peak or an extreme valley, because if you've got extreme valleys, maybe those are the photos you need to pull from the portfolio. And if you're just on 10, then you're not ready to put one together. That's exactly what I was going to say. If you don't have 10 really strong photos then you're not ready yet. Go out and take some more photographs. I think it should be really hard to pick which ones go in which order. Yeah. And that's okay if you don't have that many yet. Some people are starting off and they haven't considered how to put together a portfolio. But the idea is if you don't have 10 that you think are these are all really great and I just got to fight to figure out which order they go into, then you're not ready yet. Go figure out what should be in your portfolio and take those photos. Yeah. Okay. Something else we wanted to bring up that you need to put some information inside your portfolio. And one of them is kind of an artist statement. Really, it's just a, a paragraph, something brief that tells the people who are looking, what's your theme or your concept? You know, what's, what's your mission as a photographer? It's almost like the headline for what you do. Yeah. I mean, your photos obviously are going to speak very well for themselves, but they want to know a little bit more about you, what motivates you, and why this particular portfolio. Finally, don't forget to put your contact information nearby. Yeah, it's like asking somebody to call you back without giving them a number. Yeah, if you're going to have a portfolio, whether it's on web or in print, you need to make sure that they have a way to get back to you. Yeah. Now, the question that comes up for a lot of cases is print or web. And I think a good photographer who's trying to earn business needs to have both because there are clearly people who are out there searching online for images but if you have opportunities, you want to get a hold of somebody, you may need to show them a book. But you know what I've been reading lately? A lot of photo editors that I've talked to, they're just happy with email. Yes. A lot of them are really looking at their email more than checking, you know, postal mail that's coming in. That's why you want to have, I say, a good website that's got your portfolio available. You know, contact somebody, ask them what they're looking for, tell them what you've got to offer, and then you can refer them to your website. And that will probably do you better these days than trying to mail around a book. I know uh, 
at higher end, there are people that really want to sit back and they want to have the luxurious touch and feel of a well-crafted book in their hands. But if you're trying to get uh, magazine work or if you're trying to, you know, get started with this, a lot of photo editors are working off of email these days. Also, it's instant delivery on payment. You're not worrying about anything being transported. And it's cheaper than sending something physical, you know, well, for their purposes. Well, not only that, they're, they're into managing their time. I mean, it takes time to say, oh, you've got, you're a photographer? I need one tomorrow. You can only email or you can't email me. You've got to send me a book. Well, yeah. okay. Thank you. Are you coming to pick it up? Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take a look at your book when it gets here, you know, next week. And, oh, you want me to pay to mail it back to you as well? <laughs> look, there, I'm not trying to say that you should not have a print uh, portfolio, but consider your audience again. Are they going to want to see it in print or are they going to want to see it on the web? And can you email it to them? That's why I think really, if you're going into this commercially, you probably want to have both. But for those of us that are enthusiasts or looking for the occasional uh, purchase or opportunity, I'd say a web portfolio is, Works, is really good. Yeah. Oh, and one last thing. Create your portfolio based upon your, as I said, based upon your audience. If you are trying to get some work as a fashion photographer, don't send them your boudoir photography portfolio. Likewise, if you wanted to get work for an automotive magazine, don't show them your food photography. Oh, no. I mean, you may have more than one portfolio. In other words, don't eat in the car. Something like that. There are people who are able to shoot more than one genre. I mean, some people are general assignment photographers, but they need to be able to show their portfolio to the audience that wants to see it. And absolutely. It's just like you edit your resume based on the job you're applying for. It's the same with your yeah. portfolio. Pick where you want to go. Um, and if you're doing a variety of different things, you may need separate portfolios for their purposes. Yeah. And like you said, this it really is a resume. This is showing your capability and whether it's for opportunity for showing your art or for a commercial opportunity to make some money, you need to show it what the audience wants to see. Thank you very much for listening to Photo Flunky Show. Again, this is episode 103, so you can find the show notes available at williambean.com slash episode 103. While you're there, go ahead and get yourself a free ebook. I've got a portrait photography. It is called Creative Portraits. It's available at williambean.com slash free book. Finally, this is going to be our last show of 2017. So we're going to take a couple of weeks off, enjoy the holidays, and say Merry Christmas. That's what we do in our family. Yes. And we hope that you have a wonderful holiday, no matter what you celebrate. And we'll see you again after the start of the new year. 